In this lesson, I'll show you how to calculate the confidence interval of the y-intercept and slope for the regression model that you find. And I'll show you how to test the significance of these values. The question we're answering reads, using the data shown below, compute the 95% confidence interval of beta sub zero and beta sub one and test the hypothesis that beta sub one is equal to zero. Before we do that, let's discuss why we're doing this. Because the regression coefficients beta hat sub zero and beta hat sub one, which represents the y-intercept and slope, are both calculated from data, they're subject to sample uncertainty. Therefore, we will never exactly estimate the true value of these parameters from sample data in an empirical application. However, we may construct confidence intervals for the intercept and the slope parameter using a confidence interval of specified confidence. We'll be using these two formulas to find those confidence intervals at 95% confidence. As you can see, the first one is for the y-intercept and the second one is for the slope. Furthermore, to test whether the slope is flat or not, we use a t-test for the following hypotheses. By testing if it is a flat horizontal line, we can tell if x and y are dependent or not. Rejecting the null hypothesis tells us that they are dependent on each other. The test statistic we use is shown right here and we'll be using that later on in the question. A similar form of the test is used for the intercept, but in this question we'll only be looking at the significance of the slope. Now using the data in this question and some of the calculations that we did in prior videos, let's begin by calculating the 95% confidence of the y-intercept. The formula we will need is shown right here, and we calculated the y-intercept to be 40.786. 40 decimal 786 plus minus. Now we have to find the t-critical value. And you can find the t-critical value where your alpha is 0 0.05 and the degrees of freedom are n minus two. There are 10 observations here, so 10 minus two is eight. Finding this value in a table should give you 2.306. So we'll write down plus minus 2.306, multiply to this part, which is your standard error of the y-intercept. So the square root of the mean square error, and the formula for that is shown right here, all of the values that you need for this formula to work are written here. If you calculate it correctly and put it into your calculator, you should end up with 165.2006. So this part is done. Now we calculate what's in the parentheses. So I have one over 10 plus the mean of our data. It's not found here, but it is 27.29. Over and the variance of the X factor is 286.669. Now we can go ahead and find out the answer to this square root, multiply it to 2.306, and then add and subtract it to 40.786. You should end up with 13.0949. And remember, 40.786 plus minus. Your confidence interval is between 27.6907 and 53.8805. Now we have to do the same sort of calculation, but for the slope. So I'll do my work over here, and the formulas that were introduced earlier, I'll copy them underneath. As you see, this consists of the slope, 3.617, plus minus the same t-critical value as before, 2.306, times the square root of the mean square error, that's that value, I don't need to recalculate it over the variance of the x's, and that was 286.669. If you calculate this correctly, your confidence interval should be between 1.8667, and just for reference sake, all of this equals to 1.7505. And the upper limit is 5.36778. We just completed part one of this question. The last thing that we have to do is test the hypothesis where the slope is equal to zero. The slope equaling to zero means that it is a horizontal line. That being said, I'll write down the null as the slope 
equaling to zero. And the alternative as the slope not equal to zero. Let's use this formula to help us calculate t observed. We have our slope, which is 3.617, 3.617, this part, minus this degree symbol here tells us what we wanted to test, and that's zero. So that number minus zero. The variance of the x's happened to be 286.669, and that's multiplied to 10 minus 1, which is 9, divided by the square root of the mean square error, 165.2. Two zero zero six. Calculating this, you should get 4.76499. We will compare this with the t-critical, and it's the same t-critical as before, which was 2.306. Showing this on a t-distribution chart, that's somewhere over here, 2.306. This number is greater than 2.306, it falls in the rejection region. We have enough evidence at 95% to be able to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. So the upward trend based on this slope, comparing these two variables, specifically the blood pressure and the BMI, does in fact increase and is true at a 95% confidence interval. And there you have it. That is how to find the confidence intervals and test the slope and y-intercept.